The macroeconomic news flow in the weeks leading up to and coming out of Christmas is scheduled to be quiet, and the corporate news flow is looking thinner still, so this seems a good time to take stock. In this video, we're going to look at the key trends which shaped financial markets in 2023, and in the next one, we're going to give the old crystal ball a bit of a polish and have a stab at working out which trends might prove influential in 2024 and beyond. If 2021 was the year that inflation made an unwelcome reappearance, and 2022 was when fears of recession stalked financial markets, then 2023 saw share prices, in developed markets at least, start to discount a much rosier scenario in the form of a peak in both inflation and interest rates, as well as a soft economic landing as the much-discussed downturn failed to materialise. As a result, technology stocks roared higher, buoyed by AI-oriented narratives. Equities had a good year, except for perhaps the UK and certainly Hong Kong and China. Bonds rallied hard as yields sank in the second half of the year and prices rose, while gold surged and Bitcoin went bananas. We can see here a summary of the major asset classes in 2023 as ranked by capital gain in local currency terms. In this next graphic, we can see the performance again in local currency terms of major global equity markets as ranked by the percentage capital return. Given these trends, it's almost tempting to argue that 2021-22 was a post-COVID-19 aberration, and that the long-term trends of cheap energy, cheap food, cheap goods and cheap labour that began in the early 1980s had begun to reassert itself. Markets seem to like this narrative and even think so. So it should therefore be worth thinking about what happened in 2023 and why, and whether these trends could continue in 2024. The first key trend from 2023 was a fall in oil and gas prices. A surge in hydrocarbons, particularly in 2022 in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, had markets on alert. Rising energy prices were seen as bad for inflation, and even food prices, given how diesel and fertilizer are two major cost components for any farmer were seen as bad for growth, as they function as a tax on consumers' pockets and pressure corporate profit margins, and also as bad for government stretch finances, given the many fuel and energy subsidies that were rolled out in response. Had you then told everyone there would be a war in the Middle East in 2023, the result could well have been panic, given how similar events stoked major oil price spikes in the 1970s. However, even OPEC plus production cuts have not supported hydrocarbon prices, as American shale output surged this year. The issue now is whether oil price weakness is just about increased American supply or wider weakness in demand. If it's the latter, and there's no sign of that particularly yet, then the economic picture might not be so clear after all. The second key trend in 2023 was a cooling in the rate of inflation. Lower oil and gas prices have helped take the sting out of inflation and boost markets confidence the word is behind us. The test now is whether we get a repeat of the 1970s, when inflation struck in three major waves, as wage and price spirals set in, and 1973's oil price spike after the Yom Kippur War was followed by another in 1979, when the Shah of Iran fell from power. The third trend was a marked slowdown in the rate at which monetary policy was being tightened and interest rates were going up. Lower energy prices and cooling inflation mean Western central banks appear to be bringing a sharp cycle of interest rate hikes to a halt, while some emerging market uh, monetary authorities are already starting to cut the headline borrowing cost in their nations. This is sparking hopes that the longed-for pivot to lower rates and cheaper money is near. In the US, markets are now discounting five one-quarter point interest rate cuts in 2024, and in the UK, investors are pricing in four with the result that borrowing costs will be 4.25% by next Christmas on both sides of the Atlantic. The Fed and the Bank of England continue to protest that such talk is premature. But, two-year Treasury and gilt yields are going lower, and they tend to preempt central banks by six to nine months, clever things that are. Lower interest rates mean lower returns on cash and, usually, lower bond yields, which helps to increase the relative attractiveness of other asset classes such as equities. But, Central banks may now need to deliver in 2024 to keep stock and bond markets happy. The fourth key trend from the year that's just gone by was the manner in which America supported global growth. A global recession did not materialise in 2023, 
despite a disappointing post-COVID recovery from the world's second biggest economy, China. The world's biggest economy, America, seemed to take up the slack. Despite spring's banking crisis, as overall it was buoyed by a still-confident consumer and Bidenomics, as the US government spent heavily on the CHIPS and Inflation Reduction Acts. America's latest debt ceiling breach did not stop this spending, and President Biden's unlikely to turn off the taps ahead of November's presidential election. But the consumer saving rate looks to be ebbing a little bit, and America's deficit is soaring. At some stage, there remains a risk both trends provide to prove to be headwinds and not tailwinds, should both, and that should both start to slow their spending, but when that will be, no one knows. The fifth and final trend of note was a slowdown in global trade flows, something which might not have garnered as much attention as it should. American onshoring of key technologies to buttress supply chains and reduce reliance on China is a major geopolitical and economic trend that will surely run and run and run. The US economy is feeling the benefit right now and China is taking the pain. Tensions remain elevated between the two and global trade flows are still subdued, which is not normally a good sign for global economic growth. Any further trade and tariff tiffs in 2024 may not be helpful as the global outlook could still be more delicate than it looks. I hope that was helpful and gives you some food for thought as you do your own research. I also hope that you and your family are in good health and good spirits, and thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.